Thank you so much for joining us, everybody, today um, for our webinar, How to Make Short Form Video as an Arts Organization. So firstly, I'm just going to start with a quick introduction to HDK and who we are um, for some context. So HDK is a digital agency and we provide um, website design and marketing services to arts and cultural organizations like yourselves and our clients, um, some of which are here today. So hello, um, such as National Theatre Scotland, Ron Bear. Hello to you both. I saw your names in the chat. Um, Birmingham Royal Ballet, Alexandra Palace, Arts Council England, and lots of other wonderful organisations. And we help them connect with audiences and improve their online results. So short form video is naturally um, quite a big part of that right now. So uh, for some personal introductions, I'm Phoebe. I'm HDK's Client Relationship Manager. So I work with all of our new clients to identify the best services for their organisation. Um, and for a quick visual description, I am a white woman in her early 30s with blonde hair, which I'm wearing up uh, today. Uh, I have blue eyes. Uh, I'm wearing a grey top and a chunky gold necklace. And um, I'm joined today uh, by Meg. Hi, everyone. Lovely to see you today. Um, my name is Meg. I am the marketing manager at HDK. So I work with a wide range of our clients on their digital strategy and social media. I am a white woman in her 20s with long black hair. I'm wearing bright orange earrings and a light blue shirt today. Thank you, Meg. So in today's session, we are going to be looking at, as the title suggests, how to make short form video as an arts organization. And to do so, we are going to be exploring three of the main questions that our clients are asking us about the topic. So how can I make time? when I'm already at capacity? What if I'm struggling with ideas? And almost most importantly, where do I begin? Um, we're then going to have a two minute break for a quick survey to gather your feedback. We will then open up to questions. So if you have any that come up as we go, please make a note of them and we'll uh, have the chance to answer as many as possible at the end of the session. And finally, if you'd like to post anything on social media about the webinar today, please do so. Um, we're using the hashtag HDKWebinar, which uh, is on screen now. So please do use that and we will repost um, any of any, anything that you share. So before we begin, I just want to get a quick understanding of how many of you are currently using um, short form video content. So a poll should <laughs> lost the poll oh there we go that's the poll bit poll button okay so huh okay I don't see the poll anymore which is concerning because I did this morning um okay maybe we'll have to do the poll another way so uh, let's get creative here so the first question that I wanted to ask you is um do you currently create short form videos for your organization? Um, if you could please put a Y if it's a yes or an N if it's a no into the chat now, we can get a sense of how many of you are and how many of you aren't. Obviously, it's not quite as accurate as a poll. So I appreciate you bearing with us this morning. I even checked it and now it's not showing. So that's great. Okay, so... It's a real mix, to be honest. I would actually say that it looks like it's more yeses than noes, which is encouraging. Another question uh, that I wanted to ask is, how often are you posting short form videos? So just because we're not able to do it in a poll, if you could say daily, weekly, monthly, or never in the chat, so that's daily, weekly monthly or never we can get a sense of how many of you how often you're posting okay i'd say monthly seems to be the most common don't know if hmm okay 
so it's a real mix to be honest um wonderful but there's certainly quite a lot of people here who are either rarely posting them or not posting them at all so i'm really hoping that whether you are posting them weekly daily or never um that this session can kind of help you overcome some of the main hurdles that we face when it comes to incorporating a new kind of content into our marketing output. So first, we're going to start by looking at one of the main barriers that many of you um, will be facing right now. So how do I find the time when I'm already at capacity? So firstly, why should you bother? And why is it important to include short form video in our marketing makeup at all? Let's take a look at some data. And uh, just to note, we're gonna be following up with the slides in an email. So please don't worry about noting all of this down. So first we're gonna look at some figures on short form video as a whole. So 96% of consumers prefer to watch short form video to learn about a product or service. Short form videos are 2.5 times more engaging than long form videos. And short form video has the highest return on investment above any other format. And I know a lot of you are hearing the phrase return on investment <laughs> in your meetings. So that's really reassuring to know. Um, and this is kind of ticking three major boxes for any arts organization. There's the awareness, engagement, and as I said, return on investment. So how does this apply to the social media landscape? So in 2022, TikTok, which we all know now is the original home of short form video, if we're not counting Vine, which I'm a big fan of, was a big fan of, um, RIP Vine. TikTok came out in 2022 as the most engaged social media platform with an engagement rate of 4.2%, which when you compare it to Instagram, Facebook and Twitter, which all had less than 0.6%, it's really quite a huge difference. In an audit of 77 million Instagram posts, Instagram Reels generated 33% of total reach and 35% of total likes. So short form video is driving more reach and more engagement on Instagram than photos, carousel posts, or long form videos. And finally, as of July, 2022, videos shorter than 60 seconds made up 57% of YouTube's total views compared to 11% just two years ago. Um, and when you consider that YouTube started out as a long, long form video platform, it's really quite a remarkable shift towards short form video. So hopefully it's clear to see from uh, just this data alone that short form video is no longer an upcoming trend. It's well and truly dominating the social media landscape. So now more than ever, it's vital to include short form video in your marketing strategy. So how to make it happen? Firstly, a great way to make time and space for any new marketing endeavor is to review your current output. So we recommend starting with an audit, looking at the social media channels you're posting on, what's doing well, what's not doing well, how much time you're spending on each platform um, on a daily, weekly or monthly basis. And this is something that you can track using um, an app like Harvest or a piece of paper that you just keep on your desk. And how is it that you're spending that time? Are you researching? Are you writing captions? Are you creating the content? With your audit findings, which hopefully won't take too long, consider if your presence on each platform is serving your strategy and if the time that you're spending on it is proportionate to its impact on your organization. This will give you an overview to decide if there are any platforms that you could either rethink or reduce to make room for creating more short form video content. For the same reason, it's also important to consider why short form video matters to your organization. 
and it shouldn't just be because everybody else is doing it. So make sure that you have a clear idea of the specific purposes that short form video can serve for you. Do you want to increase your social media engagement or do you want to spread an awareness um, about an event or a specific aspect of your organisation? As an example, we recently collaborated with The Barbican on an influencer marketing campaign, and I'm sure some of you came along to that. And Bex from their marketing team, Bex Turner, described how they launched an influencer campaign on TikTok called My Barbican. They did this because they were finding that a lot of video content that people were posting about the Barbican was just about the building itself, which of course is beautiful, depending on your taste. Um, I love it personally. Uh, but they wanted to make sure that audiences were aware of all of the other great things that the Barbican has to offer, like their live events, their cinema, their talks and their various public spaces. So they commissioned a number of influencers to create short form videos to help them highlight these other aspects of their offering. So for them, it was really about awareness. Of course, that's just one example. And there are a number of ways that short form video can support your wider marketing strategy. And while this kind of bigger picture work can be hard to fit in amongst your day to day workload and sometimes hard to justify, Taking a strategic approach is crucial to making sure that your efforts are focused and impactful, and it can also save you time in the long run. So once you've realigned your priorities and embedded short form video into your strategy, you can start thinking about how to work it into your schedule. So hopefully from the audit, you'll have a sense of how much time you're able to commit to creating short form video content for example, if you know that you can afford to cut one, two, three hours from your efforts somewhere else, this is time that you can now dedicate to researching and creating videos. For example, your schedule might look a little something like this. So on Monday, you might spend 15 minutes researching and 15 minutes coming up with ideas. On Tuesday, you might spend an hour on content creation. 30 minutes on Wednesday for editing, 30 minutes on Thursday for posting and scheduling, and 15 minutes on Friday for reviewing and measuring. So this is just a very top line example of how your week might look creating short form video content. But hopefully mapping it out in this way can demonstrate just how achievable that it can be to incorporate short form video into your day to day. Let's say that you are a performing arts venue um, and you have a visiting work, a musical maybe. Um, I'm sure that you will have a trailer, maybe some production and behind the scenes footage, maybe even some Vox Pops. Um, so while it's important to do your research and come up with ideas that are relevant to short form video platforms, you've already got lots of great material that you can incorporate uh, for your content on those platforms. Or another example, let's say that you're a company of musicians or dancers. You have a unique resource of a group of highly creative people available to you. So there's lots of opportunity there for content creation. Can you aim maybe to produce one or two short videos or TikToks per week? I don't know about you, but for me, that feels quite achievable. So let's return to this first problem uh, that we posed at the beginning of the webinar. How do I find time when I'm already struggling with capacity? So firstly, it's crucial to do so. Short form video is no longer an up and coming trend. An audit of your time and output can help you reprioritize. Once you understand the purpose that short form video serves for your organization, your efforts can be more focused and efficient. And finally, cutting out the things that are no longer serving you can make room for even just an hour or a couple of hours in your weekly schedule. And this leads us nicely on to the next problem that many of you um, will no doubt be facing, which is ideas generation. And for that, I'm going to hand over to Meg. Thanks, Phoebe. Perfect timing. Just finished answering some questions in the chat. Thank you so much for all of those everyone please do keep them coming 
So problem two, what if I'm struggling with ideas? Luckily, in the arts, we have access to a whole host of things that naturally suit video format. So dance, fine art, uh, crafts, music, costumes, the list does go on. But while we do work in creative industries, that doesn't mean the ideas are always free flowing. In light of that, I'd just like to kick off this problem with a quote, which is, innovation does not happen in a vacuum. That's quite a, a lofty quote, um, but we can apply this to social media. If you are stuck with ideas, the best way to start is by hosting a very short platform exploration. If you can do that in a small group, but by all means, you know, I've done this a number of times um, by myself or with Phoebe or a couple of other people. So on screen now is a, is a very basic example of a table you might want to fill out. So we've got peer accounts we looked at, hashtags we found, posts we looked at, what they did well, and content ideas. We'll go through that properly in, in a moment. Your platform exploration might look different, but as a suggested outline, find 15 minutes as a team and on a phone or multiple phones, spend less than five minutes exploring. Sorry, I'll just pause a moment. Thanks, Phoebe. Explore a handful of peer accounts and their content. So looking for relevant hashtags, sounds, trending music, and pay attention to the videos they post and what they do well. So we're gonna watch a, a quick compilation I've put together of what this platform exploration might look like. This is on TikTok, but you can do this on any platform, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, whatever your X, I should say, whatever you are using. So we'll just watch this for a few minutes. Imagine stepping into this painting and using your senses, thinking about the fragrance of the perfume that Madame de Pompadour is wearing. Gardens of the Middle Ages included both real and ideal gardens. Poets and artists delighted in the depiction of fantasy gardens like the Garden of Love or Garden of Paradise. The gardens at the Met Cloisters are planted in reconstructed Romanesque and Gothic cloisters, evoking those that provided sustenance and spiritual refreshment within the medieval monastery. As many of you might know, Denver Botanic Garden challenged us to a way off with our Victoria water lilies. These giants of the Amazon are one of the most popular plants with our visitors because of the incredible sizes that they attain. things at York Castle Museum that just make sense. These bracelets made out of real human hair. Our cucumber ice cream mold. The real padded cell in our Victorian street. Our extensive collection of taxidermy rats. Let them eat cake. That's such nonsense. I would never say that. How old are you? I'm huh. Here we go.
Thank you, Phoebe. So that was about three minutes. And I know that can feel quite chaotic looking at that, but I think that just speaks to how fast paced and chaotic social media consumption is anyway. So when you're spending hours and hours creating this beautiful short form video, it's going to be consumed like that quite quickly. People will scroll. So it's about capturing that attention and making those meaningful engagement, engaging moments. So after your session exploring, I would recommend setting a little timer. You can fill out the first few sections of the sheet. So we've got peer accounts we looked at, National Gallery, The Met, New York Botanic Gardens, Sacramento History Museum, York Castle Museum and the Bose Museum. We found some hashtags like Museum Talk and Art Museum. And we looked at some posts, so stepping into a painting and using your senses, a compilation of aesthetic clips of venues, a garden tour with a voiceover story. I found that one quite relaxing personally. The Water Lily Way Off Challenge, the printing press, press demonstration, which was my personal favourite. I could watch that all day. Things in our collection that just make sense. And there was a really quick, I think it was two or three seconds, dress video with the sound um, Let Them Eat Cake. And of course, the Michael Scott cap cut template. So what did they do well then? In this instance, we might point out that there was some humour, there was some lighthearted tones with a funny spin. Videos were generally short and snappy. Longer videos, so the one to two minute videos, were really interesting and engrossing. So we often heard from an expert talking about a specific subject or one specific painting or even a part of a painting. Or we watched an intricate process like the printing press. We saw a range of content styles from quick and easy cap cut templates that take no longer than two minutes to trending compilations and all the way up to documentary style videos. So from here, you can step back and consolidate this exploration into a handful of content ideas that work for you. Try not to bite off more than you can chew here. So the number of content ideas you actually turn into pieces will of course vary from team to team, depending on your capacity. And if you're a freelancer or you're a one person team, be extra realistic with what you pop into your content pipeline. But for the purposes of this exercise, uh, let's say you turn this exploration into three solid content ideas. So we've got a demonstration, so a behind the scenes of a repair. You might have one later this week, for example. A cap cut template with a picture of our closed cafe. So some kind of inside joke that takes really easy, is really easy and doesn't take much time to create. And the did you know? So a look at one piece of art and a simple voiceover on top. So we've turned less than 15 minutes. In this case, it was about four or five minutes into a week or so's worth of content, all of which seem, seem really achievable. If you commit to 15 minutes like this every week for a month, let's say, you'll find that it really helps propel your content calendar forward and starts getting you to think creatively. It also makes sure that you're not overwhelmed or feel stuck on content. So what if I am struggling with ideas? Firstly, Ideas don't happen in a vacuum. Use the platforms you're posting on. I can't emphasize this enough. So research on the platform itself. It's no bad thing to be scrolling on Instagram Reels for 15 minutes at work. It's, it's all part of the research process. Pay attention to peer accounts, hashtags, sounds and trending content. And then refine this research into a handful of content ideas you can achieve. And lastly, to finish this loop, calendarize your content, both when you're going to create it and when you're going to post it. And boom, you have turned a focused research session into a solid short form video content plan. Lastly, 
before we get onto the Q and A, which I'm sure we're going to have some amazing discussions in, we've got the third question or problem of today. Where do I begin? Now we've done some strategic thinking and we've done some creative thinking. Let's get really practical for a moment and answer the titular question of this webinar. How do I make short form video content as an organization? So when filming and creating content, there are of course a number of things to consider. Firstly, what do I film on? So it's up to you, but the majority of TikTok content, for example, is filmed on an iPhone. A good quality phone is, is great for TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube Shorts. Depending on the style of content you're creating, a phone will likely be more than enough. You can also shoot on a, on a higher quality camera. These can obviously be quite expensive and difficult to operate if you're not experienced. A way to perhaps get around this is to look at what footage you have already. You may well have a, a content bank sitting there of exhibitions or shows from a few years ago, for example, that were shot on, on really nice high quality cameras. If you do this platform exploration with this in mind, you might well find new and exciting ways to repurpose that, that beautifully high quality shot footage. You'll find that you can edit from your archive time and time again. Top tips, this sounds really simple, but ensure your lens is clean. This is really, really easy to forget, especially if we're filming on a phone. We've likely got that phone in our pockets or in our bags. Make sure you wipe your camera lens before you start. Have your editing software ready to go. So this might just be CapCut, which is a brilliant free editing app that you can have on your phone. It's made by the same company that made TikTok. So the app really speaks to TikTok. Um, you can absolutely edit all of your Instagram content on CapCut as well. And lastly, check you have enough storage. We, we work with a number of organizations who don't have a work phone, for example. So if you're shooting on your personal phone, if you've got Dropbox, iCloud or Google Drive, get extra organized with your archival footage. So upload the old clips here, delete them from your phone when enough time has lapsed and it means you'll always have enough storage for capturing content. Equipment, so like we said, a phone or a camera. Do I need to consider anything else? Well, depending on your organization and what content you're hoping to create, the answer is likely yes. You might want to consider things like lighting, sound and editing software. So do your research. Once you know what kind of content you want to create, you'll be, make, you'll be able to make really informed decisions about what you're going to need in house. If you're filming vox, vox pops or kind of street interviews that we see on Instagram all the time, sound is going to be key. If you have a dimly lit venue and you want to really amplify or showcase your venue, you might want to invest in, in some lighting. And alongside this, because these two things definitely speak to each other, reference your strategy. Investing in a microphone or a gimbal, for instance, will see a return on investment, that buzzword, if the kinds of content you will achieve as a result of this are strategically in line with what your organization wants. For instance, if you're starting a new content strand where you interview your artists, investing in microphones makes sense, but it makes even more sense if one of your marketing objectives for this year is to showcase the voices of your artists on social media. This is a difficult one to itemize, but some things you might want to look at include a gimbal, tripod, light box, lapel mic, roving mic, Premiere Pro and Canva Pro, for example. We'll certainly open up in, in the Q&A to people's recommendations, but we, we have a few off the top of our head. We're nearly there. I would just love to 
remind you or to, to, to provoke you to think outside the box. I'm sure we will have excellent discussion in a moment, but we'd love to encourage you to think laterally or, or outside the box, as it says. So are there low stress, high impact ways you can create content? Is there someone else in your organization that has time and capacity where you might not? Can you work with content creators or ambassadors? And if you have budget, could you work with influencers? So a number of our clients have non-marketing personnel creating short form video content. This can be really rewarding as a way of telling your organization's story. From employees within your organization to advocates or for instance, student content creators, Think about who could help out with content creation, how they might do that, and why they should be the voices of your organization. You might find it makes perfect sense. If you'd like to hear more about this specifically, how we can explore something with you, pop either Phoebe or myself an email at the end of this webinar. We'd love to have a chat. But taking it a step further, could you go outside of your organization? If you haven't already, take a dive into your organization on social media, on TikTok, Instagram, and YouTube, et cetera. Have people already been creating short form video content about your organization? Have they visited? Have they done something fun or unusual? This is called user generated content or UGC. If you wouldn't mind, perfect, thanks Phoebe. And this is considered to be a highly effective marketing tools. And as marketers, we should absolutely embrace and encourage this, bringing it inside our marketing strategies and our practices. How can we encourage users to generate their own content within our venues, for example? How can we amplify UGC when we see it? We saw a couple of snippets of this in the video we watched earlier, and I'll just give a few examples of some more. So on screen, we've got three uh, screenshots of these are all on TikTok. We've got 50 free things to do in London, and they've tagged the Science Museum as the location. This is not a paid ad or a paid piece of content. In the middle, we've got come to MK Gallery with me. Again, tagging MK Gallery, not a paid piece of content. And we've got my favorite museums in London, same situation. A few more examples on screen now, perfect. We've got visiting the British Museum with different types of historians. That was a lovely piece, again, not, not paid for. We went to a new interactive museum and were so amazed. That really captures people's attention. Look at the numbers as well on these pieces of content created just by regular people with social media accounts. And we've got unique things to do in London that are totally free. So things they did without spending a penny. Those kinds of, of content really do capture uh, the minds of, of particularly young people on social media. So UGC is great, but if your organization has budget, working with influencers to promote your organization can be really successful. Uh, it's worth noting these aren't always paid situations. They can be gifted. So open, opening night tickets, for example. So for launch events um, or even behind the scenes content, influencers can really help you reach a much wider audience. Millennials and particularly Gen Z are likely to trust an endorsement from an influencer they admire. And this extends to cultural experiences as well. So a few examples here, we've got exploring the first Americans museum and we can see the hashtag ad. We've got come with me to the ocean at the end of the lane at the new Wimbledon theater, hashtag gifted. So again, not paid, just some free tickets. And lastly, we've got how does a blind person watch an opera? Um, that is a paid partnership, I believe with uh, the Royal Opera House. Again, we've got some more on screen. So we've got hashtag ad. Um, it was this building behind me talking about the, the history of this, of this um, museum. Another ad for the Rep Birmingham, looking for something interesting to watch. 
and Manchester Museum uh, kind of a reopening after a big refurb, getting getting the word out there to influencer following. So we've talked through a lot today. Um, and just to wrap up this, this question, where do I begin? Well, firstly, review your in-house hardware or equipment. Is it enough? Is there anything extra you will need? Then review your in-house software. Do you have adequate editing software? For many of you, an app like CapCut will likely be enough. Who inside your organization can create content for you? Similarly, how can you harness user-generated content? And can you work with influencers? Following these steps will get you thinking and sufficiently started on your short form journey for those of you who haven't yet and can really propel your, con your content and your output to the next level for those who have. I'll pass back to Phoebe now. So we've actually had some pre-submitted questions. So I'm just gonna move on to one of those um, while we wait for some more questions to be added to the chat. Um, the first is from someone called Agnieszka. So thank you very much for submitting your question. Agnieszka asked, um, do you have any tips on creating video content, promoting industry events, when I don't have any video material or images that would refer specifically to that event? So presumably this means they're not able to capture content before the event, but obviously want to promote it. So what are our tips on that? Um, Meg, are you able to share your thoughts? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think that's a, that's a tricky situation, um, but certainly one that I think many of us will have found ourselves in. Do you have any previous events you can draw from? So clips from previous events that you can edit into a kind of looking back on type video to promote the next event. Um, if you're looking to create video content, can you make... Uh, some short form reels or TikToks that talk about the event if you're comfortable getting in front of the camera. So, you know, something like five reasons to come to or an interview with the event manager or the caterer or, or you know, I'm thinking very laterally <laughs> um, or a board member, for example. Um, yeah, it's, it's a tricky one when you when you actually don't have any material at all. Um, so another question is, is this actually the best format in promoting this event? If you're really, really struggling, it, it might be um, more effective to go down a different route. Um, I don't know if anyone else in the room has any thoughts on, on mitigating this issue specifically. Um, while I feel free to unmute and, and interrupt me, but this, this kind of links to another question in the chat that came from Grace um, and a lot of people liked that question and that uh, as a charity we are very limited on media we can generate due to safeguarding um, for example working with children um, so the content isn't always available for filming any tips for organizations in our situation this one is much more common but it's kind of the same the same issue and in, in that lack of material um, so perhaps starting with with what is the reason um, behind you being on social media? So who are you trying to reach in this example? Who is your ideal audience in, in showing these videos to? Um, that might help guide what kind of content you want to be able to be creating. If you have anyone inside your charity willing to speak in front of a camera, that, that's always content you can create. Um, and if the children at your charity or who interact with your charity create any work like art or music, for example, are you able to film that work um, and just not include the child um, or take pictures of this to edit into kind of a compilation? Um, again, absolutely open to everyone. Feel free to to jump in. Otherwise, I will. Put, oh, thank you. I guess yeah, that's really great to hear. Um, feel free to keep them coming. So um, in the meantime, we've had um, a handful of questions on the influencer aspect. So I thought it'd be good to kind of answer those together. Um, so a couple of people, um, Martin, and I saw one more um, have asked, oh, yes, Penny, how to reach out to or make contact with an influencer, which is a good question because it can feel a little bit out of the blue sometimes. Um, 
In terms of logistically how to make contact with an influencer, I would say um, it depends what platform you find them on. Perhaps they're an influencer on Instagram, on TikTok, on YouTube Shorts. Take a look at their profile. A lot of them have their preferred contact method. They might leave an email there for collaborations. If they do leave an email, that's the best way to get in touch. If not, drop them a message on the platform that you found them on. And with, um, in terms of the content of the message, the initial outreach, it's important to make sure as with, you know, all the contact that we make um, to personalize that outreach. So introduce yourself, introduce your organization, um, let them know why you're getting in touch with them specifically. You know, was it a video that you saw that you think would work really well for you? Um, is it the audience that they seem to talk to? Why is it that you're interested in that influence? So let them know. Um, introduce the kind of collaboration that you would like to work with them on and just begin the conversation. Ask if it's something that, if, that they would be interested in. And uh, if so, would they like to take the conversation to an email? Would they like to have a Zoom chat, a phone call? Um, it's really just about letting them know why them, hooking them in and uh, starting the conversation. I think there was another question on influencers. Um, let's see. Although we've got quite a few questions in now, so it might be better to kind of just grab one of those. So Jessica has asked, what would you say is the best way to stay in the loop of new TikTok trends if you aren't already a casual TikTok browser? Um, so good question. I think if you're not somebody that uses TikTok outside of work, it can feel a bit kind of unnatural to you to then create TikToks. And I think there's no easy solution other than you know, you do have to, I think you have to be on that platform in order to understand it. You have to look at TikTok, you have to watch TikToks. And if if you're not someone that wants to do that in your personal time, can you build in, as we suggested, 15 minutes of research? So set up a work, an organization TikTok account. Um, you might be on there already. Use that to log in, scroll through, um, have one of your kind of ideas generation sessions that Meg um, suggested. Um, I really do think that the best way to stay in the loop is being on the app itself. Um, I don't think there's any shortcuts, unfortunately. There are, sorry to jump in, there are also some um, accounts that kind of do that weekly wrap up. I don't have the handles off the top of my top of my head, but there are some some accounts whose their whole social media presence is five new trends this week or 10 new trends you need to be aware of. So that might be a shortcut for you as well to kind of keep up to date with those news. Fab, thank you, Meg. Yeah, I've seen some of those. I think Instagram in particular, I've come across a few of those that kind of wrap them up and is it's really helpful. Yeah. Um, so thank you to those people for doing that. Um, um, I'm just seeing Suzanne's replied um, using graphics combined with old footage um used to work with children and young people's hiv charity took a lot of photos of backs of people feet hands making shapes silhouette work that's such a brilliant way to to kind of get around that still creating content but um being really respectful of boundaries and also um adhering to safeguarding rules um so that kind of yeah that's a really brilliant idea i'm sure other people in the room as well have, have done something similar um, we've had a question from somebody called Meg. I don't know if, um, I don't think this has been answered yet. So, um, thank you for asking Meg. So do you have any data? Um, this is a different Meg. This isn't our Meg, <laughs> just to clarify. <laughs> um, do you have any data on the demographic of audiences who are engaging with short form video content? Are ye, are older audiences engaging with this format? So, I don't have it to hand right now, but as you can imagine, when we prepare for these kinds of sessions, we look at all kinds of data. And there are lots of platforms that do offer that kind of data like Statista, Hootsuite, Sprout Social. Um, and I usually am able to find uh, specific data points really quickly um, on a, on Googling. Um, 
So from what I understand, uh, the spread in terms of age demographic is broad. Older people are engaging with and on platforms like TikTok and Instagram Reels um, and YouTube Shorts. Um, and it is readily available. So if if that data is something that you would like to um, kind of back up your efforts, um, then please do uh, have a look. Just to add to that, um, TikTok, for example, uh, the engagement rate on TikTok is 4.25% as of last year or early this year, um, which is absolutely astronomically higher than Instagram, which is follows it next um next along sort of six or seven times higher at least um so that suggests that those who are on the platform are really eager to engage additionally um it's not just gen z and young people on the platform over 50 percent of people on tiktok are 30 and above and i think 15 percent roughly are older than 50 um so there are a real range of audiences in terms of age on platforms like TikTok who are eager to engage. Um, so I think we're probably going to have to move on in a minute, but I just wanted to say, I wanted to highlight some questions and ask if anybody has any suggestions, recommendations, please drop them in the chat because this has been super valuable already. So Melanie has asked if anybody has a template they can share as an agreement for working with social media influencers. Um, I know many moons ago when I was first starting out with this, I found one, uh, super quickly online and you can kind of just adapt um, to suit your organization and the language you use, whether it's paid, whether it's free. Um, so that would be my immediate advice. But if anybody has any suggestions, please do share. Uh, let's see. Um, Another interesting question from Sally Marie. So how much roughly would you expect to pay a social media professional to work alongside an eight week dance process working every day? Um, so taking your videos and uploading to different platforms. Um, if anybody would be happy to share their kind of rough figures, then that would be great. Otherwise, um, I'm not sure how best to advise on that. Just see if we've had any more come in. Lovely. So I think because we're getting close to half past, I'm just going to move on. But thank you so much, everybody, for your questions and for your engagement throughout this session. It has been great for us. I really hope that it's been valuable for you so far. So just to quickly highlight, if you enjoyed this webinar and you would like to come to another of HDK's sessions, in October, we are looking at tracking and reporting your digital marketing. In November, we are looking at how to improve your website user experience. And in December, which we do this every year, it's a lot of fun, we are looking at website and digital marketing trends for 2024. Everybody on the HDK team gets involved. It's just the two of us today, but there'll be a lot more on the day. So that'll be really fun. And it's also kind of just a nice way to end the year, look ahead to the next one. Um, so please do join us for that. We're also going to be sharing the program for 2024's webinars very soon. So do keep an eye out on HDK's social media and in our newsletter. Um, and speaking of our newsletter, um, if you would like to receive once a quarter an email with marketing tips, insights and project updates, um, please do sign up to that. And um, Meg is going to share the links if she hasn't already, which she may have done um, <laughs> to the webinar sign up and newsletter sign up now. Of course, um, if you'd like to speak to HDK about your website design or marketing services, please do drop us an email. Our uh, contact details are also in the chat now. So finally, thank you again for joining us today. It's been a lot of fun exploring short form video content. I really hope you found it valuable. We are going to keep the Zoom open for two more minutes, um, just in case you need to grab anything from the chat. Um, but yeah, for now, just to say thank you and goodbye.